probably tell the main purpose of today's video and the main focus of today's video is going to be this thing. But I thought I might as well talk about my uh, main computer's hard drive situation here for a second. Uh, right now what I'm really doing is I am trying to get rid of two other drives. In fact I've already done that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking out this my passport drive here this 320 gig blue drive, and I'm going to actually use that on the Dell, and I'm going to um, put all the music onto that. And then the other drive is one of my 320 gig Seagates that I'm going to also be taking out. I'm going to just put the Toshiba drive in there into one of these, whichever one I have to take out. And you can also see I had to get another fan to cool off these drives, because otherwise they would run at an obscene temperature. But anyway, let's get on to the focus of today's video. You can see I've uh, got my desk back as well, which is nice. In fact, after I'm done with this, this box is going to be moving somewhere else. And so I will be able to access these drawers once again. But anyways, that isn't the point. The point is, first of all, what a mess. Anyway, as you can see, I've got two hard drives, and I've got some SATA cables. Like I said in my other video that I did of that thing, I'm going to be converting it, well, mostly over to SATA. Um, in fact, the only thing that's going to be IDE that's left over in there is going to be the optical drive. I don't really feel like changing the optical drive because the drive works perfectly fine, so what's the point? Uh, these are, what are these? SATA 6 gig cables, 24 inch long. Um, mainly the cheapest cable I could find. They should work just fine though. As for drives, I have two of these 80 gigabyte 7200.10 Seagate drives. It looks like they were HP spares at one point, or HP OEM drives, because they do have the spares number on them. 15 bucks a piece for these. So I have $30 into the drives, I have about $12 into this, it's $42 basically paid a little bit more than that. I think I was up at about 44 or something. The other thing I've got is, because that's only got two SATA ports on it, I need a, uh, a way of plugging in more SATA ports. I have one of my RAID cards here, and uh, I have no idea what RAID card this is. It's probably something real low end. Uh, let's take a look. Holy crap. 1740, that's relatively new. Uh, well, at least in terms of, like, SATA 2 cards. It's PCIe 32-bit, which is amazing. Usually they're not. Usually they're 64-bit cards, but... Let me drag the Pentium D out from there, and I'm also going to take a look at the CPU cooler, make sure it's seated properly, and uh, we will get on with it. The other thing that I'm going to do is I am going to clean off these feet. I think it's high time that we all get together and say... Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
outtake. All right, let's flip the switch. Nothing's exploded yet. Power it up. Delete to run setup. I don't hear anything exploding. I have the fan unplugged right now because other reasons. Oh, look at that. Scan devices. Please wait. Please detect my drives. Primary IDE master not detected. Secondary IDE slave is detected. Fourth IDE master is there. I'm gonna have to change the boot configuration and I'm gonna have to plug my camera in because it's complaining that it's almost the batteries. All right, transferring all of my data off of the storage drive right now because of course it's gonna be formatted, so. I'm gonna have to do that. I think I know how to do it too, so I've been reading up. Probably gonna have to take a look at the thermal paste on that CPU. You know, because it's probably either dried up or there's none on it in the first place. You know, and I don't know why it's running so hot. But it has to run that fan up. But anyway, let's see what happens. There we go. Initialize. All data on the selected disks will be lost. It's backed up. I don't care. Yes. Okay, so it looks like they are... No, do not confirm. Create array. Let's see. Read zero. Uh, let's just go with raid one. Array name. Call it media. Select both drives. Capacity should be just fine. Alright, so far it looks like we have a good side. Initialize. That. So that should be the drive. Let's just have a new simple volume. Good enough. Assign it letter D. I'm going to call it media. From quick format, that's all we should have to do. Finish. Formatting. Okay. I can't hear if it's formatting or not because I can't hear any of the drives. Close that, and then we're going to clone our disk over. Alright, clone complete. Hit OK. Check out that write speed. That is like. Amazing. Now you got the 10 gig ready to convert over. Alright, we are now cloning the 10 gig over to the 80 gig. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, this is going to work. Alright, so there's that. Now, let's, uh, once again, shut it down, and we're going to remove the 10 gig drive now. The system will be a lot quieter in a second. Alright. Let's see what happens. Reboot and select proper boot device. Hmm. Alright, wow. That's artistic. I don't know why that's all the way over there, but that's going to change right now, because it's not supposed to be over there. There we go. Trying this again, I disabled the, uh... I couldn't for the life of me get it to boot Windows Vista at all. 
tried cloning just that one disk over and it still gave me that reboot and insert proper boot device problem. And then I went to go and try and install Vista from scratch. And that didn't work either. In fact, I couldn't even install it at all because it kept saying that it couldn't find a system disk suitable to install Windows to. Even though there was a system disk sitting right there in front of it. But anyway, I disabled the ability to boot from the Rocket Raid card in the BIOS and it now seems to be working fine. So I'm going to try and put my POS ready back on here. Of course, I'm going to have to shrink this disk. All right, clone completed in four minutes. Let's see what happens. Oh, shut up. Reboot. Should boot straight off of the uh, Seagate drive. I hope that it is not going to boot off of that 10 gig. Because if it does, then I'm going to not be very happy. It sure takes its jolly old time to post, doesn't it? <laughs> boot, damn it! Boot off of the right drive. Oh, come on, really? What a piece of junk. Control Alt Delete, three finger salute, one finger salute. Let's go into the BIOS and change that. In fact, actually, I've got a better idea. Let's just unplug the whole damn drive. Do it that way and hope that we didn't screw up our drive by doing that. Work, damn it. <laughs> oh man, this thing is so slow. It's so annoying. Let's see what it does. Looks like it's actually going to work. But there's one other thing that I need to do. I need to change uh, some of the boot options. Because they're still set for the old... The old drive which had it on a different disk entirely. This is just on a separate partition. I have no idea how this is going to work. So let's just do this anyway and see what happens. Alright, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up. This is the Web GUI utility for my RAID card. Uh, so we're going to take a look at this. High point, oops, that's games. High point, man, RAID management. Let's start that up. Oh, it's going to open up this piece of crap. Continue to this website, because I don't care. I don't care. Why don't you just work, damn it? Let's figure this out. Alright, installing Firefox seems to have worked. Wouldn't work in Internet Explorer, no matter what I did. But then again, doesn't surprise me. Not a lot of things work in Internet Exploder. But anyway, as you can see here, we have a normal status. In fact, I actually had to rebuild the array because uh, it had a little bit of an issue, as you can see there. Data not consistent, verifying failed, rebuilt successfully, and second verify went by just fine. Smart data on all these drives is uh, perfect. So. All right, let's log out of that and reset the machine and get everything else installed like it should be. And then I'm also going to uh, check and make sure that the uh, POS Ready can boot. Like I did in the last video where I upgraded the hard drive, here are the old scores. Alright, the lowest subscore didn't change at all. In fact, nothing changed except for that hard drive, which went up there quite a bit. Of course, we're going from an old IDE 80 gigabyte drive to another 80 gigabyte drive that is actually SATA 3 gig even though this machine only supports SATA 1.5 in fact it might not even support SATA completely at all I had to drop the quality of my video down or my recording down a little bit because I was using this to record something else earlier today and I've only got about two minutes at high setting which is what I had it set up before alright let's see if this works 
knowing my luck, it will not work at all. Oh, look at that. Windows XP. More like Windows Embedded POS Ready 2009, but whatever. Alright. Let's hope this array is supported under Windows XP. It is still really slow when it's starting up. I don't quite understand why, but it is. It's not doing anything. That is not very encouraging. There we go, there's something. Please wait. It's blank. Logging off. Huh. Interesting. I don't know why it would be logging me off, but that's alright. I wonder if I hit A with the wrong key and it's aborting the login. Anyway. Still seems awfully slow. I'm going to probably perform a defragment on this or something. Well, as you can see, I had to get out my other optical drive because the first one decided it was going to do something stupid. The belt slipped or something, I don't really even know what happened, but... When it did that, the whole mechanism jumped time a little bit. I've got it back into time, but it's not really even gonna matter. Because, as you can see, the tray is broken, right there. And it's off its slip, it's off its ledge, and I cannot put it back in there without forcing it, and breaking something else, potentially. And I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it, because the camera won't focus on something that small, but left a nice big scuff mark on that lens, which renders the whole thing junk. I'm not even going to waste my time trying to fix it. So there goes another 20 bucks on a friggin' DVD burner that I didn't think I was going to need, but now I do. On the bright side, though, it allows me to get rid of that stupid ribbon cable that's in there, because I'll be able to buy a SATA DVD drive. But for now, I'm not, again, I'm not even going to waste my time with POS Ready 2009 on the system. I'm going to see if I can get uh, Windows Vista to work with my TV card, which is the only reason why I've got this optical drive in here. It's going to be coming right out after I'm done with this. So let me get when this thing all booted back up and we will uh, take a look and see if we can get this to work fine. Yeah, here we go. Let's turn this fan down so that it stops making so much noise. That's better. All right, folks, the stupid TV capture card will not work under Vista. Actually, I suppose it's more or less stupid Vista and not stupid TV capture card. The remote control doesn't work, and it won't let me record audio because it sucks, and there you go. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to get POS ready working. I'm just going to probably reinstall it from scratch, uh, but you don't really need to see that. I'm going to do it later. I don't have time to do it tonight. It's about 9 o'clock. And I have far better things to be doing with my time than wasting it on this thing. So I'll probably just make a follow-up on it later. Um, but as of right now, this is what the current state of it is. I'm going to put the top cover back on. I'm going to yank this optical drive out. And I'm going to call it good night. Alright. I know I said I was going to follow up with it later. But uh, I've decided that I'm just going to follow up with it now. And in fact, now would qualify as later, actually, because I stopped filming my last video at about 9 o'clock. And it's now about 2.10 in the morning. So, right now I'm just copying all of my data back over onto the RAID array. And I'll leave it at that. I still do need to get another optical drive, but I'm going to hold off on it for now. I'm uh, probably not going to get that until next weekend. Again, you don't really need to see it. I'm not going to make another video just showing you that I put a new optical drive in here. I really don't care for the way that that stupid blanking plate looks, but whatever. There's not much I can do about it right now. It'll change eventually. And I really need to have this blanking plate there because I don't want anything to crawl in there, first of all. And second of all, I need it there so I can get airflow with this drive. It helps to direct the airflow properly throughout this case. I actually did manage to get um, POS Ready 2009 working, and I'm almost out of space on this memory card. Hopefully I don't run out. And I did get it to boot. I got all the updates installed. Everything is running. 
and the array is perfect so this upgrade is pretty much done thank you for watching if you had any if you have any comments feel free to leave them down below and uh, this is CP666 signing off I hope to see you next time until then let's see how much space is left on this card just because Very handy light, I'll tell you that much. Well, it says that there's no space available, but it's still recording, so I don't know what the deal is with that. There's stuff that needs to go up there. Yeah, no. Stuff that needs to no longer be on the floor. And I need to go through all the cables that are in that bin. And I need to put the cables into other places because I don't have space right now for the cables. Right there, right now. I'll figure something out. I don't know why this is still recording considering it's, it says zero minutes and it's flashing red. Uh, but it is. So, I mean, there's one thing, I guess.